So I think this is a great one. This is Jose Ramirez, one of my favorite players to watch hitting. Um, I'm obviously biased because I'm a lifelong Indians fan, but this is just tremendous. Um, I I picked this one because we did the Albert Bell one the other day, and we talked about his lead front arm and how he barred it all, but how staying adducted with it actually helped him to be able to do that. So I used this one for two reasons. And I'll talk about the first one. Um, I'll talk about that lead arm first. So let's just take a look here at this lead arm um, for a minute as we go through the swing. So you can see as he gets into launch there, that long's relatively, that arm is relatively long and barred. So, and as he continues to go through here into launch, and that shoulder, again, shoulder works up and back you can see that arm it's actually like resisting so sometimes i'll cue a kid that gets real loose with that front arm i'll cue them to actually flex that bicep tricep area so what we're trying to do is we're trying to create tension there with kids that are loose movers and um, jose actually resists that turn and uses that bottom arm to kind of fight that keeping the hands back What's interesting here, what I like, is with Bell, what we saw in that other video is Bell was straight up and down. And even with Acuna, he keeps that bat um, straight up and down. But what I like what Jose does here is if we use this, just we create a vector here with his lead arm and his bat. Okay, he's keeping that bottom hand radial deviated for long periods of time. And this is something I talk to with my hitters that do have a tendency to bar is that we need to keep the angle of the forearm, that forearm angle, and the angle of the bat, we want to keep that less than 90 degrees if you have a tendency to bar your arm. And if we do that, when we turn, you can see not only does he keep that lead arm adducted against the chest, but he keeps that bat angle with that relationship between the bat and the forearm, he keeps that at 90 degrees, less than 90 degrees. Okay, so he continues to keep that there as he's heading to the bat and he gets through his connection phase. Now that front shoulder stopped moving forward right here. And that's important. I keep talking about that in the videos that I'm making. I keep talking about the importance of turning behind the brick wall. And I keep talking about the importance of turning that shoulder back and up. And he does that. And even though that arm's barred, he keeps that radial deviation and he does not supinate the top hand early. So that's the other part I'm going to talk about is the resistance of everything. Now he comes through here. Now that lead arm bat relationship is more at 90 degrees. It's not less. He's in bat lag. And then he begins to turn the barrel and release the bat head. So... When we're going through, another thing I wanted to talk about with Jose was his ability to resist. When he's in this position and you see those hips start to open in that launch position, it looks like almost if you looked at this, it looks like he's almost going to bail. And if you watch Jose swing in full speed, it almost does look like he bails. But he is fighting the resistance to just spin out towards the bleachers behind him and just spin and just rotate for the sake of rotation. He's fighting that, and the the ability of him to fight that is actually what's creating that tension. So he's here, and now that front shoulder works back and up, and he's turning behind that brick wall. He's not having any more forward movement right there. He's going to turn behind that. And what's cool here is not only is he adducted with that lead arm against the, the body, but he's using that that the upper back muscles of his top hand. So he's using his left scap and the muscles around that to pin. And as he comes down through, he's not pronating that top hand, or he's not supinating that top hand yet. He's adducting the upper arm. So this upper arm back here, he's adducting that arm while resisting the urge to supinate that top hand, resisting the urge of that left or upper rear scapula to unload and he's fighting 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 which allows that turn to happen behind the brick wall it allows that front shoulder to work up and back 
so he can stay inside that baseball and attack the inside of the ball, get into that bat lag, and then deliver the barrel. So what we see here with Jose is we see a tremendous ability to use a barred lead arm, engage the scap, turn the barrel late because of the upper back scap, keep the arm adducted, and then turn the barrel so he can deliver the barrel to the ball and then continue his follow through, the integrity of his swing plane. So if you look at that swing plane coming back through and up, he's able to maintain the integrity of that swing plane through contact into his follow through and turn the barrel towards the baseball, towards the pitcher and maintain that. So it's not a glancing blow to the ball. It's a direct blow to the ball and he drives through that ball. Tremendous stuff here. Um, just wanted to address another swing where that lead arm bars, where it stays adducted, and how the top hand, bottom hand, the bottom hand radial deviation and the top hand supination work to keep him on the ball as he resists the urge to spin off that ball. Just great stuff here. So much we can learn from these hitters that may have some traditionally different things that we may not teach textbook wise, but they're still doing so many things the right way um, that leads to them to be successful.